Next, and thank you. This morning, crews will be out working to repair this dangling power pole you see here. It knocked out power to thousands near one of the busiest Albuquerque intersections. APD says one driver is responsible. Yeah, and the bizarre story started when police say that driver threatened his family, then tried to make his getaway. Listen to this. And once he got off to the street behind his house, he carjacked an innocent victim and stole her car at gunpoint. Now, police say that carjacker is Donovan Bookout, a convicted felon. They tell us they tracked the car he stole by using their helicopter, watched as it ran a red light, then T-boned a driver at the intersection of Louisiana and Montgomery. Officers caught Bookout as he tried to run from that crash. He was taken to the hospital. The other driver did suffer minor injuries. The crash left that power pole dangling. People and businesses within a two-mile radius lost power for about two hours yesterday. Bookout will be booked into jail when released from the hospital. News 13 did some digging and found that he has a lengthy criminal history that includes charges of aggravated battery and assault for shooting someone in August and shoplifting and gun charges from an incident at the mall during the Christmas shopping season. A woman is in jail after making a mess at a local restaurant. Officers say the driver hit the gas instead of the brakes and plowed right into the El Bruno's restaurant and cantina in Los Ranchos. The restaurant owner tells News 13 a woman had just dropped off a guy when she caused this crash. And it was a pretty close shave for two people who had just moved to another table. There was two gentlemen and not even four minutes before that, they said, let's go sit in the corner. So they moved their water still on that table where they moved to. Uh, I just heard watch out and as I turned that corner, I just heard a big boom and the vehicle came through the restaurant and I took off running. The woman was arrested because she had an outstanding warrant. Police say nobody was hurt. The restaurant was back open for business last night. We turn out to this an Albuquerque father is pleading guilty to shaking his baby, leaving the child with permanent brain damage. Zachary Arivas pleaded no contest. He was arrested back in 2011 after he took the baby to the doctor with bruises. Doctors then called police. Arivas initially denied doing anything wrong, but eventually admitted to shaking the child repeatedly because he would not stop crying. Prosecutors say he faces some time behind bars. The child's family is expected to talk about how Arivas affected the boy's development at a sentencing hearing. That's in May. Bernalillo County has a new under sheriff today. Larry Allen took the oath in front of family yesterday. Dr. Allen is the department's second under sheriff. He now joins under sheriff Rudy Mora, who attended the swearing in. The new under sheriff says one of his goals is to make sure deputies are working better to communicate with the community who they are serving. Okay, you remember it, all of that snow, but did mm -hmm. all that winter weather help us with the drought? Yeah, we wanted to know just how much moisture we saw compared to past years. And News 13's Catherine Mazzone spoke with the experts. She's live in the newsroom. Catherine? Good morning, Adam. Now, there's good news. Fire weather meteorologists say when it comes to moisture in the snowpack, this past winter is the best we've seen since 2011-2012. Brent Walkner with the National Weather Service says we saw a mixed bag of precipitation in terms of snowfall across the state. Walkner agrees with both Kristen and Mark Ronchetti. It was a wet winter. It gave us a near average snowpack in the Sangre de Cristos, while in other regions of the state, the snowpack was below normal. Walkner says this will have an impact on the length of the fire season. In addition, he says we'll need to keep a close eye on what happens in the early summer and spring. Is it going to be cool and moist or is it going to be hot and dry? And right now, all the indications point towards a cooler and more moist uh, period this spring. And that's going to shorten the fire season. Now, a shorter fire season doesn't necessarily mean a less intense season. Coming up in our next half hour, I'll break down the forecast for those in the mountains versus the lowlands and tell you how intense this season could be. Back to you. Catherine, thanks. With a wetter winter, you might be wondering why we've seen several fires recently. Walker tells us we saw a lot of growth in the past two monsoon seasons, and that means extra grass and more fuel for fires to burn. A warning for drivers as you make your way through spring road construction projects. The American Traffic Safety Services Association made these signs. Expect the unexpected and slow down. My mommy and daddy work here. It's all for National Work Zone Awareness Week. Each year, 600 people are killed in work zones across the country. Here in New Mexico, you can face steep fines and even prison time for injuring or killing someone who's in a work zone. 
Your March Madness bracket may be a buzz, but here's something that might cheer you up. The Albuquerque Botanic Gardens holding their March Madness flower show right now. As you can see, a wide variety of flowers are now available for viewing. Although Albuquerque's climate is not all too friendly to flowers, it could give you some ideas on how to improve your home and garden. The exhibit, it's coming to an end. It ends next week. And a quick reminder too about March Madness. With those games come a lot of programming changes, and that means some of your favorite shows may be on at different times. You can find all of the details online on our website at krqe.com. Some New Yorkers are already gearing up for the city's first charity event at One World Trade Center. Now a live look over New York City. That charity event will help the families of 9-11. And the Daily Show host, John Stewart, will be the honorary chair. This takes place in exactly one month. Pretty shots there. Developing right now, the Philadelphia Police Department is being blasted this morning for its police practices. Like New Mexico did. That comes after a lengthy report by the Department of Justice. What the department uncovered was a large number of police shootings involving unarmed people, like 26-year-old Brandon Tate Brown. He was pulled over for driving without his headlights on. After a scuffle, he was shot and killed by police. That sparked outrage after the DA declined to charge police. The new DOJ report says since 2007, 59 unarmed suspects were shot, about 15% of all the police shootings. The report says a big part of the problem is inadequate training. That's similar findings that were found right here in Albuquerque after the report found APD officers had inadequate crisis training here. Meanwhile, two vandals are facing some big charges after throwing paint on the Denver Police Memorial during an anti-police rally. That surveillance video captures the protesters red-handed defacing the memorial in Denver while ignoring police warnings. Yesterday, both men were in court facing a judge, each charged with a felony and misdemeanor, including desecration of a memorial. Police are now protecting that memorial by adding barricades, extra officers, and cameras. I'm now 6 -0. Hearing a schedule that could result in a new community on the west side that's caused a lot of controversy. F. Build Santa Lina would take up nearly 14,000 acres of the city's southwest Mesa. Days before a major hearing on the project, County Commissioner R. De La Cruz came out in support of the project, but the Southwest Organizing Project opposes it. Opponents' big concern is water. They're criticizing De La Cruz's position. We've been told for months that our county commissioners could not talk with their constituents about Santa Lina. We call on him to, to disqualify himself and not be part of that process now. This particular organization, they've not reached out to me. I don't know anything about them. No, I absolutely don't see anything wrong with it. I think that as a county commissioner, I should let people know where I stand on issues. Now, commissioners are set to vote on the first plan for Santa Lina this week. Here are some facts about that meeting. The county commission hearing is scheduled for this afternoon. It picks up again on Thursday. There will be public comment then. There's another development that plans to bring in more than 37,000 homes over the next 50 years. Home building at Mesa del Sol near the airport has been slow going. That's because of the recession and the real estate crash. But many homes are now under construction. Time 633 breaking news this morning. We've learned that at least one, possibly two Americans are among those feared dead in an airline crash. That airline was carrying more than 100 passengers. This is all happening as investigators resume their search this morning in the French Alps. Yeah, they've already recovered the black box. However, the box is reportedly damaged, but it's believed to still be usable. It could still be days though before we know what's on that data recorder. Helicopter crews found the airliner saying it's in pieces, none of them bigger than a small car. That's what search crews will continue combing through today for new clues. The German Wings Airbus went down yesterday, an hour after its flight, and crashed into the French Alps. Most on board were Europeans from Germany and Spain, including 16 German high school students. Families of the victims on board are expected to start arriving in the town close to the site later today. But again, at least one American, possibly two, believed to have been on that flight. So far this year, we've seen a couple of fires, including this one in the Bosque in Española that forced some out of their homes. Firefighters say the blaze charred about 40 acres near the Walmart in Lowe's. So is this a sign of the upcoming fire season? We asked the experts. And they say what could be a cooler spring with more moisture means we could see a shorter season this year. But forecasts differ sort of depending on where, whether you're in the mountains or the lowlands. News 13's Catherine Mazzone gathered the facts on this, and she has them in the Newsplex. Catherine? 
That's right, Adam. There are several reasons for this shorter season, one of which is called green up, but that could have severe consequences down the road. When all the grass is green, the fire danger is low. And so here in the next few weeks, when the soils warm up, we're going to see a lot more grass growth. But then that's going to be the, the thing that will dry the fire season once that grass dries out. Fire weather meteorologist Brent Wachner says that dry out isn't going to happen until late May and into June, but it will mean heightened fire activity during that time. That's because extra fuels mean you don't need as much wind to have larger fires. Wachner says that may or may not lead to a more intense season. You still have to have someone doing something stupid or a natural event like lightning that would create the ignition to carry the, to, to promote the fire. So if everybody is safe with what they're doing, then it doesn't necessarily matter as much how much fuel you have. But Wagner says he's expecting a lower than average fire season in the mountains. That's due to timely spurts of humidity and precipitation that will keep fuels from becoming really dry. And Wagner says that's going to give land managers the opportunity to let naturally sparked fires burn. Adam, back to you. Thanks, Catherine. Wachter says it is important to let those natural fires burn in order to get rid of some of the undergrowth that's been building up for hundreds of years. And as the seasons change comes those threats of fire and flooding. Now a new study shows New Mexicans whose homes get hit hard by disasters are also getting hit hard by insurance companies as well. The study by insurancequotes.com found when New Mexicans make an insurance claim, their rates skyrocket by 19%. That's more than double the national average. I mean, it's there for a reason. People are hesitant to use it because they're afraid of the claims and uh, the monetary amount going up. Nobody wants to pay extra. Okay, so according to the study, insurance companies figure another claim will likely be made because the home sits in a disaster prone area. Time 636, the Department of Veterans Affairs is relaxing a rule that makes it hard for some vets in rural areas to get treatment. The previous rule said that vets must prove they live at least 40 miles from a VA health site to be seen by a doctor. But now the VA says it will measure the 40 mile trip by driving miles as calculated by Google, Google Maps or other similar sites, not as the crow flies as it stands now. The rule change is expected to roughly double the number of eligible veterans. The change was made after pressure by Congress and other lawmakers. Coming to 637, for the second time in two months, a dangerous drug took center stage for police in Fort Lauderdale after a man was trying to scale the fence around the department when he became impaled. And suddenly it was a race against time as cameras nearby captured all of this. Police say a spike from the fence went right through the man's leg. And rescue crews had no choice but to use a circular saw to get him out before he bled to death. He's now in the hospital. On Sunday, a man told police that he had smoked before being impaled while trying to scale the fence around that department. Wow. Okay, so be careful what you post online. We've heard that warning, right? Absolutely. A warning one Texas woman is learning the hard way. Yeah, this after posting a video on social media where she's seen ranting about another woman and her child. And this morning, there's new reaction. I'm not sorry for anything I said. That's what she's saying now. The woman who's from Texas shared some harsh words after seeing the child act up in the grocery store. She also criticized the other woman's parenting. Dozens of people have expressed their disgust for the original video. There are two answers to this. Kill it, give it away, or leave it at home. And I just said a small prayer. Please, Jesus, let there be something wrong with that child. That video has generated hundreds of views and counting this morning. Stellar experience. New